So you've been trying to render with Octane for Unreal Engine and not having any luck. Well, before you bash your head on the keyboard, I've got four tips that are going to jumpstart your renders. So here we are in Unreal Engine and to demonstrate the problem, I've created this scene right here, made up entirely of about five kit bash meshes. And I've chosen these meshes particularly because they're very dense and they've got some high resolution textures as well. Unreal Engine can handle a scene like this, no problem. I'm getting close to 100 frames a second right now. And that's because Unreal Engine has tricks up its sleeve to handle stuff like this. It's got Nanite for heavy geometry, it can do virtual texture streaming, and it's got Lumen, but all of that tech is of absolutely no use to Octane because Octane is an unbiased path tracer that will basically load all of your geometry at LOD zero. Doesn't matter about texture LODs, anything like that, they are going to be loaded at full res and they're going to be trying to render on the GPU. Let's load Octane right now and see what happens when we try to render this with the default settings. Go to your outliner where you'll find the render target actor, and when you click on that, You'll see in the details panel a nice big render button. Click that. We're getting an image. <laughs> um, I've waited for a little while on this one, a, a few minutes at least, but we've had no samples apparently, and I'm pretty certain this render has crashed. So my first tip if you're running into problems is to go to the Octane menu, click Preferences, and then in the Preferences panel select Enable Out of Core Data. What this is going to do is enable Octane to move your textures and geometry over onto your CPU RAM instead of clogging up your GPU. This could be the key to unlocking your renders. In this tab, I'd also make sure that denoise is unchecked because Octane's denoiser can also take up a bit of memory. And if you're running into problems, it might be best to start without the denoiser and then maybe enable it later on. And here's where the true power of the Octane Preferences tab comes into play. Let me show you what happens when we render this without out of core and we're just looking at the Octane Preferences bar. It's gonna tell us so much about why it's not working. Our out of core is disabled. We're going to hit that render button and take a look at the device memory here. It's all color coded and this is filling up with geometry and textures. It's, it's full. It's completely maxed out. There's basically nowhere to go. And that's why it crashes. Now take a look at it without of course enabled. Only a fraction of the geometry, which is the yellow here, and the textures, which are the red, are actually being rendered on the GPU. The rest have been offloaded to CPU and now we can see that we're getting samples very very slowly by the way but we are actually rendering and it hasn't crashed which is a vast improvement between not rendering and actually rendering so it's good to know that we can actually get our render started and that's great but we are obviously getting very very slow rendering right now the samples are ticking up so slowly and the reason for this is because we're using out of core so now we have to optimize this scene we have to make sure that it's all running on the gpu stay tuned to see how we go from three minutes of rendering time down to something much, much lower. So this is tip number two, optimize the geometry in the scene. We're gonna use Unreal's modeling tools for this. So you need to check that they're enabled, go to the plugins menu and make sure that the modeling tools editor mode is checked. If it's not, then you should check it and restart your engine. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna focus in on one of these Kitbash actors, the double towers, because it is very, very dense and it has a big footprint on our GPU. Now we don't all have endless hours to go through each of the meshes in this actor and optimize them individually. It's gonna to take too long. So what I'm gonna do is take this whole blueprint and merge it into one mesh. We can do that by selecting the mesh. Then we go to our actors menu and select merge. Give it a name and save it. Now for the optimization part. If you go into the static mesh viewer for the new merged mesh, we can see how many triangles it takes up. It's 8,367,000 triangles. Go to your modes menu and select the modeling mode. And with your mesh selected, we can go and select mesh and then simplify. And what we want to do is we want to reduce the overall amount of triangles in this mesh. You can do that by a certain percentage. The default here is 50% but I'm gonna set it down to something like 10 because I think we can get away with reducing this drastically without much quality loss. Taking this down to 10% triangles took about three minutes of time, which is not that bad considering I did try to do this with LODs previously and it took hours, actually hours. So this is definitely the quickest route. Let's load Octane again and look at our preferences tab to see what difference this has made. 
<laughs> you can see right here, the geometry is definitely lower. We've only done this to one mesh as well, bear in mind. We could do this to a whole lot of them, but this is much, much better. But as you can see, the red part of this bar is our texture memory and it's just huge. So we need to optimize that next. Luckily, there's a nice easy way of doing that. Let me show you. All of my textures for these kit bash meshes are in my cargo folder. So all I need to do is filter my content browser by texture. And it's gonna show me all of the textures that I have. Just control A and you have all of your textures selected. Once they're selected, just right click and then go to asset actions and then edit in property matrix. This will open all of these textures in one window for us to make bulk edits. Now, of course, the larger the texture, the more memory it's gonna take up on disk, but it's exponential. A 4K texture can take up tons of VRAM, whereas a 1024 texture can take up quite a lot less. I am actually gonna change all of the textures, blanket to 512 resolution. Now make sure all of your textures are saved and we're gonna reload Octane. Let's see what happens this time. Look at the difference that has made there is basically no texture footprint left on our GPU. This is incredible. And the render's done. <laughs> wow. While I was speaking, it's just done immediately. That is the power of this. We've gone from three minutes plus to 10 seconds of render time. Number four, make sure you're using the right version of Octane. Let me explain. So I'm currently rendering with the alpha build of Octane Render 2024 for Unreal Engine, rendering at 1024 by 512. But as I increase the resolution to HD, I start getting a slower render time, as you'd expect, but it's slower than it should be. When I get to 4K, 3840 by 2160, the whole thing crashes. That's not normal. I should realistically, and have in the past, been able to render at 4K with this machine, using Octane Render. And a quick thank you to Chris Heckman from Octane for this tip. I went back to the 2023 stable release of Octane Render and this is what happened. Again, a very quick render at 1024, a much quicker render at HD, and yes, in 4K it actually did render at 3840 and it was going to be about 3-4 minutes per frame. I could probably get that down through the kernel settings within Octane Render, but using just the default this is actually really good. It's not always going to be a problem using an alpha build, but in this case it was, and it's worth bearing in mind what version you're actually using. So now that our renders are actually working with Octane in Unreal Engine, we need to get them out of the software as a movie sequence. And if you want to know how to do that, watch this video next where I run you through the whole process. See you there.